my ankle! Earlier this year, we spoke about Camp Coral, the first of two SpongeBob SquarePants spin-off shows this year. And at that point, Paramount Plus had only released the first six episodes and then went silent. That is until now, where we just received seven more. And we also recently spoke about the second spin-off show for SpongeBob, the Patrick Star Show. If you're curious to hear about that, and my thoughts on the show and more, check out the video linked down below. But today, let's see if Camp Coral, with its extended time between episodes, has helped improve the overall quality of the show. The first few episodes were a bit rough and had some awkwardly stiff animation, but the last few episodes seemed to start faring a bit better, with the team behind it starting to figure out their natural groove in producing the episodes. So here's to hoping for something... surprising? As always, thank you so much for checking out this video, I truly appreciate it. Make sure to hit that like button, every 100 likes I'll do 10 push-ups. Maybe. All right, I don't know how to approach this video. At this point, this is my third time rewriting it within the past 24 hours. I didn't think taking the approach of briefly recapping and going over every half episode segment the show had as it became very monotonous and just drawn out. And I wanna just jump straight into my thoughts and opinions on the show as a whole. So let's approach this differently. And now I always wanna go into this kind of stuff with an open mind. Obviously I have my previous thoughts on the first six episodes, but if we are going to get spin-off SpongeBob content regardless, I, at least for the sake of the writers, animators, and the crew working on trying to make something special, I feel I owe it to that to let the preconceived notions drift away. If you don't want to watch the show, or in general don't enjoy the show, that's fine. This is just a portal into what the show brings to the table through my thoughts on what was presented. Your opinions are valid no matter how you feel, and no one can take that away from you. After watching all the new Camp Coral content, I can honestly say that the experience was okay. The time in between releases of episodes definitely helped benefit fit the overall quality of the animation, maybe minus a few bits of noticeable stiffness here and there, but in general the animators seemed more familiar and more comfortable with translating the Spongebob mannerisms to the 3D animated world. When it comes to the spin-offs, Camp Coral exists as the one to create the biggest divide in how it looks and how the tone of each episode is presented. But what is nice about it is the fact that they are trying to play around with not only the limits of 3D animation, but are not afraid to cut away to a puppet music battle between anchovies, like it was Harry Potter puppet pals or even some live action moments or the above the sea moments. The further you watch into the series, the more you see how impressive the animation quality gets. By episode 13, I had been completely enthralled with how great and detailed the vibrant world looked. Something that did take time to get used to and eventually feel more accepting of such a big departure of SpongeBob's roots. Okay, some animation still looks a bit weird with the clipping aspects, but honestly, after investing the time into Camp Coral, I am fine with the show's 3D look. I know, very controversial, please, Put the pitchforks away, it's not that deep, I promise. I also want to speak on the targeted demographic for the show. Now we do have to technically classify this show under the babyfication category, aging down the main cast of characters for Spongebob. But if anything, the show only continues to keep the same level of comedy, reference, and overall writing which can be found in the main Spongebob series. You wouldn't be mistaking to see the concept of the show and maybe even look at it and immediately write it off as a Spongebob show for an even younger audience, essentially dumbing it down for as just a flashy, keep your attention for 22 minutes watered down version of Spongebob. But it doesn't differ far from the main show. Aside from the camp setting and the adventures related around that, it's very much more of the same, with the same characters only slightly skewed. It doesn't rely on the fact that they are younger for the crutch of the comedy, which I feel a lot of similar shows that do the babyfication thing do, which now I think exemplifies the point I'm trying to get across. Now this still doesn't give it the most concrete reason to be its own separate show, a problem I feel plagues this and the Patrick show, but here it's only saving grace is the camp aspect. As far as my personal enjoyment of the episodes presented, it's a mixed bag as well. There were a bunch of okay ideas that didn't leave a lasting impression beyond the initial viewing, but a few stuck out to me that I enjoyed, some even answered and addressed Spongebob questions we had since the beginning of Spongebob. Literally, everyone now figures out that they can breathe underwater in the under underwater since they are sea creatures. Of any circumstances to address this matter that has been a part of Spongebob forever within a prequel spin-off show is continuity wise weird but that's been out of the window for a while now but something that was funny to see and to finally be questioned and answered even when they grow up they're gonna forget all about it the first of the newest episodes episode 7 opens with a pretty fun story about an anchovy being different from the rest of the crowd of anchovies I genuinely like the story given here about him it was funny and another great segment is when Spongebob has to go in time out and he's treating it as if it's jail in his own mind there are some standout great moments like these sprinkled throughout that I will take away and I will 
will remember. But the few and far between of great just don't push the forgettable and less enjoyable episodes to a higher feeling for the show. Now, I can recognize that I am not a kid anymore, clearly. I do feel that animation in general can be enjoyed by anyone. I mean, just watch any grown adult cry to any Toy Story film. But here, I can feel how much the show doesn't hit the same notes that the original Spongebob seasons did for me when I was growing up. If you enjoy modern day Spongebob, then this show is something you would probably enjoy as well. It's really catered to keeping that same comedy tone while trying new animation styles and giving us a new setting to play around in, while still respecting the basic sanctity of the characters for the most part. Not 100%, but enough there to feel that the respect is still there behind the scenes from the team working on the show. I do hope the generation of people who are enjoying this or are growing up with this now are truly enjoying what's being offered. I hope it hits those notes for you and imprints everlasting feelings of nostalgia when you look back upon this down the road. If you're curious and checking it out, even while not being a modern day Spongebob fan, I do think there are some impressive visual moments and some decent episodes in there that older Spongebob fans would actually enjoy, which is nice that there is a little something for everyone here. It's just one of the biggest hurdles is getting over the choice and giving this show a chance or not, which for many, whether for lack of interest or principles of not wanting to watch the spinoff shows, may be hard to do. And if you decide not to, I don't think you're missing much. I don't know if I'll cover Camp Coral specifically again in the future though. While I don't outright dislike the show, I feel I've said all I can say about it now. There would need to be something substantial enough for me to have a deeper look and dive back into, at least if I was to make another video. Between the premiere episodes and the original video I made and the episodes presented here, I think that's it for my opinions on Camp Coral. It's a very okay, mostly harmless show that, while having some creative animation, fails to differentiate itself as a show that runs simultaneously with two other Spongebob shows. Maybe I'm just Spongebobbed out. I don't know. Regardless, I am glad I took a look to see what the show had to offer after all these months of waiting for more episodes, but the conclusion I landed on stayed the same as last time. So that's where Camp Coral is currently at. You heard my thoughts, now I would love to hear yours down below in the comments. Are you enjoying Camp Coral? Are you not? Are you Spongebobbed out like I am right now? Please feel free to share. I appreciate you checking out this video. It does mean a lot to me that you choose to spend a few moments of your day here with me. So please hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this, and it truly does help out the video. I will for sure cover more Spongebob topics again in the future at some point, so I hope to see you back here for more of them. Subscribe to be part of my journey through movies and television and how these films and shows affected my life from the past and present. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.